What the f I swear to God, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck. Um, <laughs> so we're starting out the video. So I was on my way in my van because last week in a uh, another string of bad luck, I lost my brake line. Well, my brake line blew on my usual tow rig. I gotta go through this light here, I have to, in my Escalade. And uh, so anyway, that usually wouldn't matter. I got plenty of other vehicles, but um, today I'm going to pick up a vehicle I've been trying to buy for a very long time. It's a 1986 Olds 98 Regency. I've had my eye on this car for psh, over a year. Um, the seller was the son of the original owner, is the son of the original owner. They wanted unrealistic money for it. They wanted like 2,500. I looked at it a while ago, made an offer. Um, we've been back and forth for a while on the price and we finally came to agreement on a price and it's more than I'd like to pay but I also recognize that the used car market as I've talked about in some other videos is very inflated let me throw the windows up I'm going to be on the highway for a second here so uh, yeah we agreed to 11 I got the teapot over here we agreed <laughs> We agreed to 1150, um, which this car needs some work. Been sitting for a long time, but it's optioned exactly how I would have optioned it if I bought this car brand new in 1986. At least pretty damn close to how I would have optioned it. It's beautiful, white, hard top, no vinyl roof, blue interior, everything about it. I love it one owner car from 1986 still not like oh it was a one owner but some flipper bought it and now he's selling it this is the son i mean I'm, I'm meeting up with the original owner and the son right now she has to sign the title uh she's like 90 something years old her husband it was her husband's car she died many years he died many years ago and the car has been sitting in a garage so um it runs it runs kind of rough when i looked at it last i when i first saw it I offered like 300 bucks you know because that's what these cars were worth when I looked at it um, but everything is inflated now and uh, my offer has continued to go up and up over time because I want the car you know it, it, I'm getting too emotional about the car I shouldn't be doing it but um, I am so 1150 is what I'm paying for it probably the most I've ever paid for a classic front wheel drive GM but uh, it is what it is. So the reason I say I've got the worst luck is um, my serpentine, I just got on the highway. If this happened over here, not a big deal. But as soon as I got on the highway where it's one way only, my serpentine belt uh, started to disintegrate. And this is not like a uh, square body truck where you can pop the hood and swap it in five seconds. This is a van, so there's no room to work. And the guy is waiting for me right now at the tag office. So, um, I think it's still kind of on there, maybe half of it. I'm just trying to get my van home at this point. I don't want it to overheat or to lose all my accessory power. So I gotta go back and get, I guess, my pickup truck to tow this thing. Again, just another dose of the Big Al's Bike and Auto, bad luck. I mean, this I've been driving this van all weekend. This could have happened at any point over the weekend. And it happens right now when I'm in a rush to go get a vehicle and it happens when I'm on the highway. <laughs> all right so I'm on the highway heading home it was interesting getting the car on the trailer it's it's i mean it wasn't running well when i looked at it last but now it's really not running well to the point that you got to two foot it and uh we got it on there though <laughs> just barely took a couple of tries kept stalling out but we got it up on there and uh yeah so you know i got i got some steps to take here with the fuel system now 
I was hoping to not put any gas in it and just immediately pump out the tank, what's left in there. But I think it's actually already empty. Uh, and this guy, the, the son has been, you know, trying to put a couple, two, three gallons of fresh gas in it here and there. But the problem is the car still sits and sits. So that fresh gas goes bad. Um, I think I'm going to go and put in some ethanol free fuel, just a few gallons see if it runs a little bit better off of that now obviously i still have a lot of work to do with the fuel system but just so i can move this thing around because right now to get it off the trailer and into my shop if i don't put some gas in this thing i, I probably won't even happen so because uh, again he's pretty sure it's empty when the with this car he said when it's empty the fuel gauge starts dancing around it's dancing around so um i hate to do it but i think i gotta put some gas in it and then, uh, you know, get it into my shop. And then from there, if I have to pump that gas out, whatever, it's a couple of gallons. Plus I don't want to run that fuel pump dry. You know what I mean? Even just to get into the shop, that could be kind of the final blow for that fuel pump. So I put in four gallons of uh, ethanol free it's for the 15 bucks, screw it. You know, if I end up draining it out it is what it is. Old rusty and trusty here. <laughs> Jesus. She got it done. All right, let's see if she'll uh, start up and idle. And well, it idles fine, but it won't. When you put it in gear, it cuts out. But now it's got some gas in it, so let's see what happens. Guys, okay, first look at the inside. I think it has like 20 keys to it. Typical. Hold on. Let's try the other keys. There we go. That was my night be for this car. He might have gave me some other keys from an old one. All right, there we go. Low coolant thing is a typical faulty sensor. Let's see what happens. I don't expect it to be any better. No, it already died. All right, well now at least I'm in the, okay. Before I back it down, Need to put the wood. All right, well, getting it in here wasn't easy, but I managed to pull it off. It's still running like crap. I mean, no question I've got to change the fuel filter at the very least. Because of how it's running, I'm probably just going to pull the fuel injectors out later today and uh, clean those, bench clean them, some solvent. And uh, But I wanted to try give you guys a quick look at the car before I uh, head home. Like I said, I'll come back here later today and start messing with it. But I did get it in here. It stalled out three or four times, but <laughs> it's in here. I kind of, I don't know, maybe I regret putting the gas in it. I just thought maybe it was low, but whatever. When I, last I test drove this, whenever it was, uh, this thing ran and drove. I mean, it's kind of stumbled a little bit, but it uh, wouldn't stall out, you know. So obviously something has gotten worse since I last saw it. But you can see it's in pretty nice shape. The paint, I mean, this the camera is always gonna make things look better than it really is. It definitely does not need to be repainted at all. That's what I'm trying to get at. The paint in this car is beautiful and original. It's got a lot of grandma scratches on it, you know. You can tell there used to be like a bumper sticker or something here that kind of took some of the paint with it. This thing has been garage since they bought it new, so I can't imagine it would have needed a repaint. But you see what I mean? Like grandma scratches a lot of this will buff out a lot of it won't this is the worst of the damage on the whole car and this is what i thought was really cool this is from hurricane andrew in 1992 when they didn't live in that little house lived in another one in the same neighborhood which is a neighborhood very famous for how it did not do well in hurricane andrew it had just been built a few years before by disney uh, it's kind of this, it looks like a New England neighborhood, but it's, you know, in Miami. And the houses were built out of wood. They weren't built well, but the building code was more relaxed back then. Inspectors were getting paid off. This hurricane hit and just wiped out that whole neighborhood. And their house, I think their house took quite a bit of damage, but this car was actually outside because they had newer cars at the time that they had put in the garage. And uh, this is from shingles off the neighbor's roof flying and hitting the hood so pretty cool 
Uh, I think that's kind of like a little battle scar. That's the worst this car took for damage from that hurricane, which hit that area as a category five. I think that's pretty neat, but you can see the chrome and stuff is perfect. Perfect, perfect. This is definitely in better shape than most 98 Regencies. This is a Brom, by the way, opera lamps, but this thing really is in nice shape from being garaged. The AC in this car works. Uh, I don't have, I haven't had it on because the car barely runs as it is, but believe it or not, uh, when I was underneath the car hooking it up to the trailer, it's actually a replacement compressor. It looks like it was probably done right before this car was parked and so were the brakes and the tires. The tires are old. I don't know how old, I don't see a DOT date code on them, but if you look, they're not dry rotted. So we'll see how they hold up. Maybe they're flat spotted. I didn't feel anything weird. I was towing it, but um, power locks work. Driver's window doesn't, the rest do. Of course, the one I want to work doesn't. But the AC, when I first checked out this car a while back, the AC was ice cold and it's been sitting for years. That tells you it doesn't leak. That right there is a pretty nice bonus because you know I buy a lot of cars for less money than this one, but then I got to overhaul the whole AC system and everything else. <laughs> Look at that, somebody put Cadillac, mat ba Cadillac mats back here. They must have had a Cadillac too because the front mats are, they just say GM. Cool, they match the car. Beautiful shape this car is in. Look at the headliner, pillow top seats. This is one loaded up old 98. You've got the insignia here. I mean, just pristine. I don't think anybody's ever sat in the back of this car, to be quite honest with you. Absolutely beautiful. I don't regret buying this one bit. You know, again, I, I can't stress enough. Some of you are gonna say, but Al used to buy cars like this for 300 bucks and it doesn't run right. Those days are coming to an end, my friends. And even if they weren't, even if I could still buy cars like this for 300, weekly like I used to, I probably still would have paid what I paid for this car because good luck finding another 86. I know there was late 80s, early 90s, 98s that are still floating around. I like the uh, earlier nose of this car more than the later one. It looks a little more classic to me. There's a little more chrome, but good luck finding one in this shape not just on top, but underneath. Remember, this is a Florida car garage since new. That is the holy grail for vintage cars. And let me show you what I mean. That's probably the original muffler, and it's not even that bad, but look at everything else. Spotless, spotless. Look at the bolts, the nuts, everything is spotless. Look at those tires. Like I said, they're not dry rotted. They're literally brand new. He told me they put new tires and brakes all around. And uh, he didn't mention the AC, but I can tell that's been replaced. And this car got parked. And I've got the, uh, I just have to glue it back in. I've got the emblem here for the front. It's in my truck. Regency Brome. <laughs> I'm in love with this car. Look at the condition of this interior and that dashboard. That dashboard has hardly seen any sun in its life. So here is our stumbling, rumbling 3.8. This is a red dot 3.8. Looks like this radiator might have been changed too. Either that or it's just in really good shape. Probably changed, probably explains the, oh yeah, that's definitely a replacement radiator. There's no question. So it's had some service done. I mean, this is not an original car in the sense of all the parts being original. That water pump's been changed. No question about that. That AC compressor for sure has been changed. So a lot of things have already been taken care of that even if I had gotten this car cheaper, I probably would have to take care of. But looking forward to getting back over here later when it cools off a little bit. And uh, you can see how accessible these fuel injectors are if I do have to you know, take them out, clean them or replace them or whatever. All right, so first things first, changing out the fuel filter. And uh, I didn't get it on camera, but you can see what came out. This was a dry uh, catch pan. A lot of crap came out of that filter. The line itself coming from the tank, everything that came out of there was nice and clear. But uh, the filter was definitely full of some junk there. So between the filter and the injector cleaning, hopefully she starts running a lot better.
All right, so yesterday I changed out that fuel filter. I know I didn't get much footage, but come on, that's about as basic of a job as there can be. So change that out. So I'm gonna be just taking the injectors out and cleaning them on the bench. By the way, if I sound like I'm talking funny, uh, I've got an Invisalign in. I, uh, I ended up doing the, a few months ago now, I got the Invisalign to fix my bottom teeth. 22 hours a day and it's kind of weird to talk with it in so basically i'm going to show you guys how to take off a fuel rail first thing you want to do is relieve any pressure in the rail now i'm going to undo that connector right there on that fuel line which is five eighths so there still is some fuel in the rail obviously and what i forgot to do i'm setting a bad example here is to put a shop towel there to catch that fuel now there's also another connection another fuel line that comes in at the back of the rail but mine's totally stuck um and i don't you don't really have to take that one off to get the injectors out but if you wanted to it's right underneath the fuel pressure regulator but you don't have to uh, fortunately i think your view is pretty decent there all right so first thing i'm going to do is pop out these little retaining clips to hold the injectors to the rail. These are kind of just extra preventative. I'll take off these electrical connectors once I pull the rail up a little bit because you can see how tight it is. But this won't be an issue, this line right here. You'll see why. As soon as I undo the four 13s that hold it to the intake, uh, then we just pull this up and that will get out of the way. Where is my ratchet? This may very well be one of those scenarios where these injectors are just so destroyed from years of neglect. Make sure this is 13, yep. That I may just replace them. I mean, injectors for this vehicle, remands are so cheap. 60 bucks delivered for all six. So it's not like these are $600 injectors or something that we're trying to save. And believe me, if this had been a more normal vehicle, like a Honda Pilot or something, if there's a million in the junkyard, just like I did with that Pilot with the bad injectors, I would have just went down there and pulled six good ones and, and that's it. I wouldn't even bother cleaning these. But there is literally no... 19, there's no LG3 or LG2 3.8s in any junkyard within uh, like a 300 mile radius of me. So I got to work with what I got. You'll also want to pull the harness for the fuel rail, the clip from heat. It just broke right off of mine. And uh, geez, I think that's literally it. So now I've got the rail loose. See what I mean? This is the guy I gotta be worried about. But he's not quite ready to come out yet. Now he is. So there we go. Rail is now out of the way. And here's our six injectors. So now I'm gonna go set up my cleaning device. And I'll take you guys over there in a minute and show you how I clean up these injectors. All right, so this is a bit tricky because I'm by myself. Let's see. For example, Let me figure out a different way and make sure this battery, because when I move this, it moves the battery, obviously, but you kind of saw what the idea is here. You want to keep this pressurized going into the injector. So I went with whatever vacuum hose I had laying around, wrap the straw of the carb cleaner until it's about the thickness of the hole going into the vacuum line, slide it in there and throw a zip tie on it. And you just saw how much pressure I put on this because I didn't keep the battery connected. 
and it didn't slide off. So that's a real easy way to do it without going crazy and drilling holes into valve stems and things like that. But obviously my battery method is awful. I had to move over the shade. Um, just a couple more pointers I forgot to mention in the last clip. And again, you can do this a number of different ways. If you have alligator clamps, that works a little bit better. This is what I had laying around, a little bit of scrap wire. And it doesn't matter which order you put the wire, or you know, if this prong touches this side of the battery, it doesn't matter, it's gonna work the same either way. So I got three more left to do. The first three are spraying beautifully like they should. Hey, there's a key here. And uh, I hope to see the same from these three. And one last thing, uh, you may be wondering why I didn't pull the baskets out, the little basket filters and the injectors. I tried. Uh, and they're not budging, but you can act, I mean, you can't see with the camera, but I looked in there with a real good flashlight. They're clean. All right, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I've done several prime tests and I don't have any leaking from the injectors. What is making noise is the Schrader valve. So I actually had messed with that before. And so I think it must just be, now that I've removed it, uh, the seal is no good, so I'm gonna uh, scare the piss out of me. I'm gonna remove the uh, Schrader valve and replace that. I've got an extra one right here, and that way that's not bubbling and hissing. Okay, I replaced the Schrader valve, it is no longer bubbling, and I got no other leaks. So she's uh, every time. <laughs> Here we go, first start since changing the injectors. Obviously, it's gotta get all that fuel back into the injectors and the rail and there's cleaner in them. So I'll take one more crank or maybe two. Oop, almost. Plus I changed the fuel filter too. I haven't started it since. So that's another, that's another reason. Oh, oh man. I don't think she's ever ran that smooth. I mean, there's definitely no timing chain noise in this motor. I think as quiet as can be. Now, it always ran pretty decently cold, and then when it got warm, it would start to sputter. So I'm not gonna make any conclusions yet as to how it's running. I can tell you that the exhaust flow feels a lot better. It doesn't feel like it's misfiring. All right, it's been several minutes. It's still running pretty well. I'm about to pull it out and take it for a quick drive. never ran this well. There's no question about that. It has never ran this well, not since I've known it. So let's see if we can drive this just around the parking lot. Oh yeah, it's definitely misfiring. All right. I couldn't even do this before. Nope, I couldn't do this. Real test will be if I can put the AC on. Nope, man. Let's try it out the air. I might still have some crap. It's getting through. All right. I mean, it's still misfiring, but we don't know yet if it's fuel related. Those injectors might just be toast. funny damn it better but but not where we need to be I might just get some other injectors for a hundred bucks all right so I'm doing the oil change so if nothing else came of that at least I was able to uh, get the engine warmed up so I can get the oil to flow out of here it's dirty but 
no anomalies it's not milky or i mean these never had head gasket problems but uh so far i haven't seen any chunks of uh <laughs> timing gear or anything like that come out of the uh oil pan which is good i noticed it was a little overfilled on oil um that could even be a little bit of uh, gasoline that might have leaked in there from the injectors. Or it could just be that the last idiot that changed the oil overfilled it, and that happens plenty. Because I think this is a six quart pan, and you can see it's pretty much getting up to the top. And this is a five quart motor, and I still haven't pulled the filter, so interesting. I gotta say, I feel like it's running better. I mean, it it doesn't feel like it's misfiring much, if any. Maybe it just had to get some crap through the fuel line and that was it and it burned it off. Because that's definitely running better than it was before. Well, let's see. Let's try this again. Try taking it for a drive. Alright, so I've been uh, just digging and digging into this vehicle and uh, I started looking into the EGR system. And so it looks like the valve has actually been replaced. Um, this is way too new and shiny looking to, look, to have been in here for 30 years. But I pulled off the throttle body. You've got this EGR port going down from the intake. That was completely clogged over with carbon sediment. And I'm clearing it out right now, but that will certainly cause a rough running condition and that could certainly throw a mass airflow code. So I'm getting that cleaned up right now. And hopefully, finally, hopefully we should see a difference in the way this runs. Look at how big that hole actually is supposed to be. Remember when I just filmed a couple minutes ago, I thought it was a smaller opening. But that, when I first opened this up and pulled the throttle body back, you didn't even see that. That was completely covered solid. This is going to make a difference in the way this vehicle runs. No question about it. If not, fix it completely. So I got it as clean as I can, and uh, I'm going to button this all back up, and I'm really excited now to start this thing up, because I think, I mean, this, it, when you add it all up, mass airflow code, well, really, not a mass airflow code, but a code 34, which kind of relates to this whole area here, and there's your blockage. So, fingers crossed, if it gets better but doesn't fix it entirely, then I need to start checking this kind of stuff. Maybe this valve for the EGR is not as new as it looks. <sighs> all right, all back together. And the moment of truth comes now. Did we finally figure out why this is running the way it was running? Hopefully, I say past tense was. All right. So it wasn't starting and I freaked out because <laughs> I was rushing to get this back together. I forgot to plug back in the harness to the injectors. I forgot to plug back in the throttle position sensor, a bunch of stuff. And one at a time, I kept figuring it out as I was pulling the codes, but uh, we're back in business here. So it's gonna idle high obviously because uh, I just pushed all that carbon. All right, so I think she's just working herself out because now it's staying running and I can actually drive it around. And I mean, it'll, it, it's not running well, but it's running. Plus I've had the injectors out, mass airflow sensor cleaned, bunch of other sensors I cleaned. It's just, it threw so much at this car's computer that it's trying to figure things out again, but it's getting better. The idle has calmed down a little bit. And again, now I could actually put it in gear and drive it around. I drove it around for several minutes and you know, it was, it was struggling, but 
that's the most I've ever been able to drive it. So we're getting somewhere. We still got a ways to go, I feel, but this is certainly finally heading in the direction of progress. Uh, and that's all I can ask for. The Regency here is doing better and better by the minute. This car just needed, once I took care of all the issues, clean the injectors, fuel filter, EGR cleaning, whatever else I messed with, all the other sensors and things I cleaned, I just needed to drive it and let everything sort itself out, like I was saying. And uh, here it is, doing, uh, doing well. So I will uh, keep you all posted. I'm just driving it around at this point. But it's, it's almost perfect at this point. You know, a little, little hesitation, but there's still a lot of carbon that this thing has to burn off. I mean, this is the, the best this car has ever ran. I mean, I, and it's, it's not misfiring at all. At this point, it's just, it's got to be either clearing up bad fuel or it's got to be that carbon because when you get into the throttle, it is as smooth as can be. So, uh, oh, the check engine light's back on. But just to see it go off for a few minutes, for a minute, uh, again, a sign of improvement. So I'll be driving this thing around a lot tonight, trying to really kind of tune it in. But I think uh, my objective of having this car ready for the weekend may actually uh, come to fruition. All right, so here she is. I've been driving her around more and more. Just filled her up, full tank of ethanol free. It was not cheap, but uh, she's doing well. God, I'm in love with this car. All right, so here's where we're at. I've been, I've got it to the point where it'll stay running now. Definitely that cat is bad. There's no doubt in my mind. Listen to it. Oh, it's more than bad. It's glowing. <laughs> 